Well, when you make I'm, contact, for what reason? I made contact with Charles because I wanted to understand. At the time, I really was trying to figure out how I could slip through the cracks or how to beat the system. Yep. Okay, was, good. I'm glad you're honest with me. That speaks a lot. You know, it's illegal for you. Excuse me, sir. It's it's against the law for you to contact your victims, and we have different. All right, good morning. Mental okay. Parole is reconvening. We are at Allen Correctional Center. Um, would the staff at Allen please introduce yourself for the record? Good morning. I'm Deputy Warden Brent Thompson. And good morning. I'm Assistant Warden Jesse Bellamy. And I'm the ARDC Supervisor, Sybil Ryder. All right, thank y'all for accommodating us this morning. Uh, <clears throat> My name is Cheryl Renanza, serving as chairman of today's parole panel. We have what I have with me my colleague, Mr. Steve Prater, to my left, Mr. Chuck Tillis to my right. Uh, Mr. Haynes, good morning. Good morning. Thank Would you, you introduce the, yourself? What's your DOC name? Number. DOC number. Thomas Haynes, 38610. Right. And let me let you know, Mr. Haynes, we have joining us this morning also by Zoom, Terrence Wynn. And here with us in Baton Rouge, we have Melvin Franklin Jr., who uh, both of whom want to speak on your behalf. We'll ask them to do so at the appropriate time. First, let me read some identifying information into the record. Uh, Mr. Haynes, you're classified as a second felony offender. You're currently serving a 73-year, 29-day sentence uh, for conviction convictions in East Baton Rouge. Um, attempted second degree murder, uh, as a habitual offender, attempted second degree murder, possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, and armed robbery. All that occurred or was sentencing occurred in 2003. Um, you did have for, uh, you were first sentenced for the armed robbery in 1992, and at some point were afforded uh, super, good time supervision, but that was revoked because of the new convictions in. Oh, sorry. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. So let me, uh, how long have you been in Allen, sir? I've been in Allen since March of last year. So a I've been, like, I've been here like a year. A little over a year, right? Yes, ma'am. And so I'm going to tell you what concerns me about your record. Okay. And, and I'm sure you know. You, I see the record shows a substantial loss of good time, 420 days. I see you have 132 write-ups in your jacket, the last being in 2022, which in my view is not that long ago. It probably seems like a long time to you. Uh, I do see that you um, have taken some anger management and risk management and living in balance, but I'm concerned about the disciplinary record. I do have in the uh, in the in the record. We do have letters of support from your family members. Of course, we have opposition that's been expressed by victims um, and law enforcement. So, uh, and the prosecutor's office has expressed opposition. So, I want you to tell me why you think we should consider favorably for you today. Okay. Thank you, first of all, for the opportunity to be able to make amends for the wrong that I've done to these victims and to present myself as a better person today. You know, my conduct record here, you know, it speaks volumes of the type of person that I was when I came into the system, you know, and I was a mess. And I've been through a lot of ups and downs. You know, I wrestled with the ideal of proving the system wrong. You know, to the point that I had to face reality and actually take responsibility for my actions and truly decide whether or not I want to stay stagnated in this mindset, you know, or move past this for something better. You know, so I had to pray on that. I had to pray hard on that. And, you know, looking at 
the system as the enemy. I had to recognize that the system ain't just come about to entertain me. The system has been around for years and the system can actually work because I've seen a lot of people that have been in this situation that got up and did something about their situation. So based on those, those examples, you know, I had to come to terms with who I wanted to be. I got tired of looking at who I had became and decided that I wanted to be better. So, you know, my- Did that change was, once you got to Allen? No, ma'am. That change started at David, at David Wade. I was in the cell that David Wade going through on transition. And I prayed hard for change. And, you know, I'm, I believe that faith without works is dead works. So I had to actually walk the walk instead of just talk that talk. Right. And so let me stop you now. Let me stop you now. And I see, I do see since you've been there, you, you know, it, it, the change started happening at David Wade, but you continued getting in trouble. I won't go into the nature of the writers, but you continued getting into trouble. But I do see that, as, as I mentioned, you haven't had any write-ups, it appears to me, at least, in about a year and a half, which is probably right. the longest time you've ever been without a write-up. That's exactly where I was going. I've oh, out of so, so wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm going to, I'll tell you when you can talk. Yes, ma'am. I'm just wanting to, to get a few things on the record. Um, right. I did not hear, I, I mentioned some of your programs that you, you have taken. And when I go back and I look at your, your crime was violent crimes. All of them were violent crimes. You yes, know, you were on supervision for an armed robbery when these attempted murders occurred. And you fired an assault record, assault rifle at a vehicle and also a residence occupied by at least nine people. You had no idea how many people you could kill. You didn't care, apparently. And so, so as I consider that and I look at your programs, it seems to me you could benefit from things like thinking for change. I think... Um, I don't see any real significant substance abuse education or treatment in your record. Is there that I missed? Yes, well, just yes, yeah. show me the certificates. Yes, just I have, I have thinking for a change. I've, I have thinking for a change. The pre release program. I have AA on um, self help. I have in living in living balance one and two. Oh. I've. All of those you've taken at Allen? I've taken those. I've taken some at Allen and some at David Wade. I took the In Living Balance 1 and 2, risk management, anger management at David Wade. Since being here, I've been participating in the substance abuse. That should be in my record. I have a, a certificate submitted just the other day. And what's your job? What's your job? I'm a laundry artist here at um okay. Anna Dorm Dorm artist, yeah. But You're I'm present, waiting to graduate, thinking for a change this week. Oh, good. That's why I didn't have it in the record because you hadn't finished it. Right, but they put me Are here. You a They've been working with me here, and they got me in all of the programs that matter that they offer basically i mean everything mr Haynes, mr Haynes, yes. my question is are you a trustee yes ma'am and what what class i'm, is I'm, I'm in an honor status i have an honor status okay, okay good honor that's honor good honor. to know that's good yes, to know I'm, you know for know. me for me i'm going to listen to the warden in just a minute but for me i and i'll hear from the folks that want to speak today but for me, I have a hang up with the conduct record. I'm glad it, it does seem that you've turned the corner. Your start change has begun. That's the note I made in my in my record. But I need a longer period of sustained uh, good behavior before I could vote for you. I think you're on track. 
Okay, that's where I'm at. We'll hear from my colleagues. Uh, Y'all have any questions? No, I was going to say the same thing. It, it appears that your the courses that you started taking and have completed have just started since your parole eligibility date. So the first 20 years, we didn't do much. And your conduct has gotten better since your parole eligibility date. So I would just, in my mind, I'm wondering, is this a, are you truly a changed person or is it a scheme? Have you changed because you see some light at the end of the tunnel and so you're trying to convince us of that? And and that that's my only question. I'm thinking out loud for you. I'm not acute. I'm proud that you have changed. I'm proud that you've changed in your mind and in what you're saying and the courses you're taking and your discipline. All those are going the right direction. But I'm trying to decide in my mind before I vote, you know, is, is this a scam? And so that's what's on my mind as you talk. But you don't have to. There's nothing I wasn't asking the question. Thank you. Um, before I ask the ward for his comments, I have two more questions. Mr. Haynes, have you uh, ever made? What was the reason for the contract for the contact? When I talked to um, Charles, I had to explain to them. You know, he, like he he put it in the words to me, like two wrongs don't make a right. You know, he said, you know, what happened to his family was wrong. And that, you know, he wanted to So you made answer. contact for what reason? I made contact with Charles because I wanted to understand. At the time, I really was trying to figure out how I could slip through the cracks, how I could beat the system. Yep. Okay, was, good. I'm glad you're honest with me. That speaks a lot. You know, it's illegal for you. Excuse me, sir. It's it's against the law for you to contact your victim in have. the record that you contacted both Mr. Charles and Miss Naja, particularly Miss Naja, to try to uh, help you with your appeal. And and I just wanted to make put that on the record. Warden, is there uh, Warden Thompson? Is there anything you can tell us about Mr. Haynes? Uh, yes, ma'am. First of all, I want to uh, set the record straight in regards to his comment they actually made regarding him actually being a uh, trustee. He's currently not a trustee. Okay, I think he got some things confused on that, but he's not a trustee. Um, uh, he and I actually had a talk just on the other day, and the, the biggest thing I encourage him actually to do is to try to find himself, making himself available to try to get involved with any kind of self-help classes. That's the key thing. He still have a lot of time he actually got to do. He uh, started out real, real bad into the system uh, within the last year, year and a half. He's trying to improve, but he's still got a long way to have to go. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. And I, I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, Mr. Haynes, we're going to listen to uh, your guests. First, we'd like to hear from Terrence Wynn, who's on Zoom. Good morning. Morning. Um, I just would like to say that Mr. Haynes is, he's a, a typical person that goes through the system. You know, he's been in the system a while. And like Mr. Prater was saying, he was trying to find out, he was thinking out loud to see whether or not it's a scheme. But change usually starts from something. And I think that his change started because he really wanted to go home. And to know that you want to go home, you know that you got to set aside all your bad ways, all the things that keep that keeps you in the system and makes you make bad decisions. I think that he placed those to the side to understand what was more important. And what's more important is to get programs, which he's done, and to stay away from write-ups, which he's done, and to grow up, to mature. And I think he's he's done that. And I think that he's shown signs of really wanting to come home and really wanting to come home and do the right things. I don't think he wants to scheme anybody anymore because now it's no longer on the victims or the victims' families. I think he know that everything sets on him. He has to do everything. Nobody else can let him go home. He has to make sure he do everything right to go home. And I think he's he set himself on that course. And so today I just ask that you look at the changes and please just give him a favorable recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate seeing you and, and thanks for participating. We have with us here, Mr. Melvin Franklin. Mr. Franklin, can we hear from you, sir? We'll face you all. Yeah. 
He'll be able to see, I think. Can y'all fix the camera on him? I am here for uh, Thomas Haynes this morning on behalf of the department. I have here a certificate where the mayor have given me to open a tire shop at 4362 Florida Boulevard, Miss Sharon Brew. And today I was kind of hoping that I would hear some good news on Thomas' behalf. I know time does bring on a change for a person. Oh, uh, but in this tire shop, we change tires, rims, we rotate tires uh, there. Also, we do brakes there. Uh, his pay, we work from 7 to 5.30 there. His pay would be $12 an hour there, uh, Monday through Saturday. We all from Sundays there. So... And also, I do have a state license. I do uh, a subcontract with Stucco and Bricks. So I do have another opportunity for him as well in the field. Uh, with unemployment there as well. So it's up to you all now, but he will have a job whenever, whenever he's eligible. That's great. That's good news. Thank you, sir. We appreciate Thank you. It. Thank, Thank you, you all. Thank Thanks you. for coming. All right, Mr. Haynes. Yes, ma'am. We'll get ready to get there. You are over there. Um, is there a brief statement you'd like to make to us before we go? Yes, ma'am. Um, with regards to the misunderstanding with the trustee status, okay, well, I have an honor status, you know, due to the fact that. The conduct record is a big issue. And here at Allen, you know, six months without a write-up, um, six months of actual incarceration without a write-up, you qualify as an understatus. And with my one, my 18 months without a disciplinary report, I have an understatus. I now live in a an honor dorm, an honor unit. And it's like honor status slash trustees unit. So I didn't know the exact details about my new status. So that's where that confusion came from earlier. But as far as the victims, my victims in this case, all right, um, I never made an attempt to contact on um, some of those victims. I I use like a private investigator. Um I sought permission that um that was within the law. I never tried to cross no lines that would jeopardize anyone's freedom. You know, but like I say, to be honest with you, you know, I was fighting for my appeals and I was reaching for every struggle that I could reach for. But as far as that goes, you know, I can't justify anything outside of trying to get my freedom back, you know. So it was the wrong so, way. So I, listen, Mr. Haynes, I think I think we get your message. And let me tell you why. It's not just about getting out of jail. It's about no, staying out of jail. And you got you got some work to do. You got some work to do in that regard. And look, I'm really proud of you that you're in the honor dorm. That says a lot that you are. You have turned the corner. I think uh, Terrence Wynn said that you're showing signs, and I agree because I can see it now in your conduct record and, and stuff. But and and I'm really pleased that Mr. Franklin wants to offer you the job opportunity. You've got stuff to work for. Then. For me, I'm not willing to take a chance today. But I'd like to see you back once you uh, have remained right up free to your next eligibility for a hearing date. Have some more programs under your belt, and, and uh, you might have a different outcome. But for me today, sir, I'm gonna uh, my vote is to deny your parole, and I want to hear back from you, and I want to see a good record next time. Good luck yes, to you, Mr. Craig. I, I concur. I concur in that. Good night, Mr. Chellum. I concur. All right, you got some work to do, sir. Yes, ma'am. Go to work. Good luck. No problem. Thank you. All right.